the Virginia Horse Industry Board, Southwest Virginia Agricultural Association, and the Virginia Christmas Tree Growers Association are proud sponsors of Virginia Farming. This program is brought to you by the Virginia Farm Bureau. Large or small, Virginia farmers work year-round to help put food on your table. And Farm Bureau works year-round to help farmers and all Virginians. Farming, it's all good. To learn more, go to vafarmbureau.org. Polaris, offering its hardest working, smoothest riding off-road side-by-sides. Featuring the value-minded new Ranger 800 midsize, Hunt Far More Trail. Polaris has the Ranger side-by-side you want at Polaris.com. Brought to you by Farm Family. Life, auto, business, farm. Nancy Asher, stable owner, visionary, agent of change. Another personal story on farmfamilypeople.com. Farm Family, the people you know. Hi everybody, welcome to Virginia Farming. I'm Amy Rocher. Today we'll meet Farm Mom of the Year, Virginia's own Betty Rawson. Then we'll talk about plants that attract hummingbirds and butterflies when we join Mark Viette in the garden. And as always, we'll have the Ag Calendar and a Minute in the Field video. All this plus the Ag News of the Week on this edition of Virginia Farming. Cargill has officially opened a chicken processing facility at its complex in Efremov, Russia. The poultry facility will supply McDonald's restaurants in Russia with chicken McNuggets as well as other chicken products. Officials say the long-term goal is to source the majority of the chicken in Russia and allow McDonald's consumers to benefit from high-quality products produced from Russian-reared chickens. Now, Cargill is not new to Russia. Their other operations in Efremov include a corn and wheat sweeteners plant, a vegetable oil refinery and bottling facility, a malt plant, and an animal feed mill. Well, last year, a digital government strategy was launched to transform government services to be in line with 21st century expectations. In this feature, the USDA's Bob Ellison looks at how some agriculture department agencies have pursued that goal. Americans now have faster and easier access to useful U.S. Department of Agriculture information through computers, tablets, and smartphones. Looking for a farmer's market? Go to the Agricultural Marketing Services site. What consumers are able to find is not only the physical location of the markets, but also they're able to determine what type of products are sold there. They're able to find out what type of payment methods are accepted, whether um, credit cards are accepted at the market, and also what types of nutrition benefits are accepted. So, for example, SNAP and WIC Farmers Market. Grocery shoppers can access a food safety and inspection service smartphone app to find out where a food product was produced. Whether it's meat, poultry, or egg product, on the labels of their products, there is an establishment number. You can look up and find where that product specifically came from. Farmers and ranchers looking for a USDA service center can find the closest one anytime and on any device. We want to be able to enable our customers to get to our service center location using their mobile device. And that's just simply what this application does. It gives our customers access to our field office location and to the address and phone number of their service center locations. Economic Research Service key web content is available as open data and the popular Amber Waves magazine is now accessible on mobile devices. The Economic Research Service produces really important research, but it's only good when people have access to it and they can utilize it. So we're following what our users need, and that evolves over time, and we're going to continue to evolve. To learn more about the department's comprehensive digital strategy efforts, visit usda.gov slash digital strategy. In Washington, D.C., for the U.S. Department of Agriculture, I'm Bob Ellison. Thank you, Bob. VDAX is offering a free pesticide disposal program in designated localities. Available in the counties listed on your screen, the program collects unwanted, outdated, or banned pesticides and disposes of them in a safe manner. Now, since the program started, it has collected and destroyed more than 1.8 million pounds of outdated and unwanted pesticides, eliminating the environmental threat. Now, for more information, visit vdax.virginia.gov or contact your local extension office. Brewer's Grain is turning out to be an excellent protein supplement for some Virginia cows. 
Patrick Dunn has the story. Who knew that craft beer production would be good for a cow-calf operation? It's the beer's key ingredient, the mash, that's a real game changer for Massey and Joyce Saunders' Roseland Farm. The spent mash they acquire from Taylor Smack's Blue Mountain Barrel House Brewery is a fantastic food supplement for their growing herd. When I was talking with Taylor, he was trying to figure out how he could get rid of his grain at the least amount of expense for himself. And we got to talking and I said, well, I think I can supply you containers where you can make it easy for you to fill it and easy for you to get them out of your place. And then I can find a way to get rid of it with my cattle. And it's just been a win-win for both of us. Casey Smith operates his own natural beef operation and shares the brewer's grain with the Saunders. He knows that there's a good reason the mash is so effective. We feed the brewer's grain because it's a cost-effective protein supplement that's readily available to us. Protein is a critical component uh, of the diet in the rumen of the cattle. It has tremendous effects with the cattle beyond nutrition. Me personally, with my farm, the largest gains I've seen with feeding the brewer's grain have been with reproductive efficiency, uh, higher breeding rates and shorter time intervals, which translates into more dollars in the end. And Alvin Tolliver, who manages the Saunders farm on a day-to-day -day basis, is also convinced the cattle are benefiting from this protein-rich supplement. Since we've been feeding them in the mash, they have good calves, but calves grow good, mama cows milk good. For the past two years, the Saunders have been providing a natural beef product for the local market. Massey says the grain is definitely making a difference in flavor. We're getting good marble on the meat, we're getting good ribeyes, we're getting good steaks out of them, and the hamburger is superb, and when you cook it, it just falls apart. I can see a big difference. The people we are supplying with that beef see a big difference, and most of our people are repeat customers, and they're saying, we will not buy beef in the grocery store anymore. Saunders is thrilled with this local cooperative. He and Smith believe recycling the spent beer mash through their herds have helped to make their cattle calm, healthy, and easy to handle. But perhaps Joyce Saunders sums it up best. We have happy cows. <laughs> and that makes for happy customers at both the steak and ale ends of this unique farming arrangement. Reporting in Roseland, Virginia, I'm Patrick Dunn. Thank you, Patrick. A recent report from the USDA and the EPA concluded that the decline in honeybee numbers due to colony collapse disorder can be attributed to multiple factors. Factors cited include parasites, disease, genetics, poor nutrition, and pesticide exposure. Bill Bundy, president of the Virginia State Beekeepers Association, said honeybees are suffering from a suppressed immune system due to environmental factors, agricultural chemicals, new pathogens, and the chemicals we use to kill those pathogens. Honeybee health is of the utmost importance to American agriculture. It's estimated that one-third of the food consumed in the United States depends on pollination. Well, beef produced in the United States is growing in popularity all across the globe. In this segment, Cindy Campbell shares a report from the U.S. Meat Export Federation on the value of exports and the reputation U.S. beef has overseas. Compared to global competitors, U.S. beef is not cheap. The U.S. Meat Export Federation says that presents both challenge and opportunity. The vast majority of our competition is grass-fed uh, beef. Um, not high quality in any sense of the word as we define it. Uh, not to say that grass-fed, there is a taste for grass-fed around the world and uh, you know their interpretation of what is value might be different than ours, but what we try to do is to show the, the uh, distinguishing characteristics of U.S. grain-fed beef and the high quality definition of that's very, very important and really sets us apart in a lot of parts of the world. Even though our prices may be higher, there's a definite growing demand for that high quality beef. The trade organization tries to connect that known value with buyers who have the ability to purchase it. And we have to really, uh, you know, account for the fact that we're higher priced and, you know, not everyone can afford it. So that's part of what USMEF does is we identify those demographics, those countries that can afford at least a segment of the population. And we try to, you know, really uh, expand that, that particular demographic in these countries. 
from the Middle East to the recently reopened Japanese markets, Hallstrom says the future of U.S. beef exports looks promising. And that's good news for the ranchers and feeders raising it. We're at about $215 a head of every animal slaughtered is attributable to the export business. And uh, this has seen dramatic growth the last few years, and, and um, we're going to see that continue to grow, especially with the recent announcement on Japan. Uh, we, we figure that's another $20 a head, incremental. So we're up to $235, $240 a head uh, for 2013, uh, which we think is phenomenal. Since export demand favors the highest quality grades, better beef keeps building this market. I'm Cindy Campbell. Thank you, Cindy. Well, another Virginia farmer has received a national award. Betty Rawson was named Farm Mom of the Year. We'll meet Betty and hear her story coming up next on Ag Insights. Virginia's own Betty Rawson was recently voted 2013 Farm Mom of the Year in a contest held by Monsanto America's Farmers. Betty, welcome to Virginia Farming. Thank you. It's good to be here. Well, congratulations are in order, first of all. Thank We're very you. proud to have a Virginia mom representing us nationally. Thank you. So tell us about how this contest came to be. You had to make it that you went through judging for the regional title first. For the regional, yes. My son, Charles, um, nominated me, and I didn't know anything about it. And he had to fill out it and do an essay and why he thought I should be Farm Mom of the Year. And then that was judged by Monsanto and the Agra women. And um, then after that, then it was put out online for votes. For votes. For the, for the Farm Mom of the Year. Okay. Yes. And I'm going to read and share with our viewers a quote that, uh, that was part of the essay that your son wrote to have you nominated. Your Charles wrote, son Charles wrote in the following nomination letter, whether she is driving a tractor, feeding cows, or caring for her family, she is 100% all in for the job. Mom certainly doesn't let grass grow under her feet as she is always on the move for her family, her church, her farm, and her community. What great mm -hmm. words from your son. Thank you, yes, very much, yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. So part, that was part, that was just a snippet uh -huh. of the essay that right. he wrote, so that, that put you into the regional spotlight, mm -hmm. and then everything was put online and voters from all over the nation. Voted for the right. And? And my son just put it out on his Facebook, and which I'm not on Facebook, <laughs> but anyway, he put it out on Facebook, and, and they, it just went from there, you know, just notified different ones. and Right, and then on Mother's Day, right. they announced I, the winner. They announced the winner, and I came home from church, and um, I guess I'd been home maybe 10, 15 minutes, and the phone rang, and this lady was on the phone, and she said, I just want to let you know that you are the farm mom of the year. And I said, no way, uh-uh, you're kidding, you know. And she said, oh, no, no, you won, you won. So anyway, oh. that's, that's how I found out on Mother's Day, yeah. What a great treat on Mother's Day. Right. That's yes, amazing. It was. Yes, it was. Well, the other thing that, you know, it's, it's farm mom. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to talk a little bit about your family because you don't have a small family, do no, you? No, I have, I have five boys. I uh, raised five boys, then I have 11 grandchildren, and um, then my mom and my sister, it's just the three of us, and I help care for them, for her. Well, my mom will be 95 in August, and they live just right next to us, and I'm partial caregiver for her, and my sister's on dialysis, <coughs> so, you know, I have to help them a lot. And, but, um, no, it's quite a quite a lot with, you know, raising, when I was raising all the boys at home, and now um, the youngest one lives right next to us, and um, then Charles lives right about 10 miles from us. Now, your youngest and Charles help you on the farm, they, correct? Yes, ma'am. They are in the, in the partnership with us, and uh, Lee has uh, two children, Coleman and Haley, and then Charles has three, Charlie, Elizabeth, and Ellen, and now they're coming along, and they're in the 4-H and showing animals and, and the FFA and all. So. Okay. Wow. It's but a big family. A big family. Yes, ma'am. So how many grandchildren do you have total? Eleven. Wow. Yeah, eleven. 
have five right close to me and the rest of them are spread out. Well, just being a grandma would keep you busy, yes, I would it think. Yes, it does. It does. <laughs> It does, yes. So your farm, you guys are in Louisa County. In Louisa County, in the Green Springs area. Green Springs, mm -hmm. okay. And your your farm is Quaker Hill? Quaker Hill, uh -huh. Tell us a little bit about your farm, the size and, and what uh, you raise. Well, we, the, uh, the farm, <coughs> we have 525 acres that we own, and then we rent, so we farm 3,000 acres in the area. But our farm consists of 525 acres. Okay. And what do you grow? Crops? Or? We have soybeans and corn and barley. And then we have like 750 Angus and Angus uh, Simmental Cross cattle. And we um, have two production sales a year in the spring and in the fall. And sell, we um, do our bulls, sell bulls and heifers. And then we sell some. Um, commercial cows to go with it. And we also have pigs that we um, do for show pigs. My son um, sells to the four, you know, for the 4-H and the FFA. And we just recently got into the goat business. So now we have goats too. Because <laughs> you needed something else to do, right? <laughs> we just right? needed something else to do. So now we have goats and that's more or less for the, uh, my grandchildren are gonna be showing goats at the county fair, you know, okay. so. And then we have chickens, of course. Oh anyway. my goodness, and uh, that's that's about it. I, you have to be busy. What are your your primary responsibilities on the farm? What are your what's mine? Your role? Mine now that I've gotten older, I do all the book work. I stay in the office most of the time. Do all the book work, um, the accounting, payroll, the, the taxes, and everything that comes with the books. You know, with mm -hmm. the office and then run errands, do whatever they want me to do, you know, uh, when they're working cattle, keep a record of the, what they're doing and all. But my primary right now is with in the office in between that helping mom and, and the grandchildren and all. Right. Well, I also read on your <coughs> website that you guys export a lot of your cattle to places all over the world. So that has to be play a big part of your job. Tell me tell me about your exports and what's what goes on with uh, that. They um, we this just this past um, spring I think it was they exported some to Russia. And um, we go th um, the man TK exports and Culpepper who's a good friend of my son Charles and uh, they they've had some uh, sent to Turkey. But they get them up, you know, they have to send them up to Pennsylvania and, you know, they're in a feedlot there for a while till they get everything set to go. Okay. But then it all goes through them. We just, you know, get the cattle and have the cattle and get it to them. And and then they they do all the, the exporting and all that. Wow. Well, that's, that's kind of like <coughs> a, a business all on its own, right. handling yes. all that. Yes. Uh -huh. One more thing I wanted to talk to you about was your involvement in agriculture education. Um, I read where you were involved a lot with ag in the class, and there's something special that happens in Louisa, a, a farm tour that you help with? Oh, we just had um, um, a farm safety, youth farm safety day at our farm uh, through the, the Farm Bureau Women's Committee and the Virginia, my son is an extension agent for Virginia. Uh, and so we coupled together to do that and we had um, like 10 stations and uh, we had like 80 kids and 60 adults. And we did tick bites, from tick bites to ATV safety to farm, uh, to pond safety, to uh, snakes and critters and poison ivy and horses and um, how to take care, how to be safe around your, your animals when you're showing them and all. And that was really a big success, yeah. Well, that's a lot of kids <coughs> that you're influencing right there yeah. in your own backyard. Yeah. That's amazing. And then in uh, March, we read to the schools for mm -hmm. ag, um, ag Literacy Week. And we read to over 500 kids in the county. So that was real, really good. Wow. Yeah. Well, congratulations on this award. I, what, what are your plans now? Do, do you, are there certain uh, meetings that you have to attend? Do you have to make appearances? Well, we have, I just found out um, just this past week that we have a trip to St. Louis in August. And it's the Farm Mom Reunion. And it'll be all the the farm moms and the regional winners from the years that they've had it, plus 
the ones for this year. Well, congratulations from Virginia Farming, and thank you for representing us so well, and keep thank up you. the good work. I'll, I'll try. Thank you. <laughs> we'll be right back. We talked about the decline of honeybees a few minutes ago. One way you can do your part to keep all kinds of pollinating species happy is to plant flowers that attract them. Let's join Mark Viette in the garden. When you're thinking about planting a butterfly garden, you might consider putting it right in your own backyard. And right amongst me are great plants that attract butterflies. The blue plumbago, which is a great ground cover plant over here. And then we have the blue mist shrub. Now you don't need a lot of these plants. Maybe one to three plants of each works well right in your backyard, but it's filled with bees, butterflies, hummingbird moths, or really some people call them clear wing moths. They look like baby hummingbirds. And then over here, you can see the summer blooming flocks. And this blooms throughout the summer and all the way late into the season, almost till frost. And this is covered with butterflies. And this is a very fragrant plant, by the way. And as we're walking, in addition to the white butterfly shrub, they're blue butterfly shrubs, purple butterfly shrubs, and they bloom all season long if you keep deadheading them. And right in front of the blue mist shrub with the beautiful bee here, we've got Nepeta or the cat mints right along the ground that's in full flower. And that attracts butterflies at the same. And you can see the butterflies flying all around me. You can even plant the Rosa Sharon, or the sometimes called the tree hibiscus, and this variety is known as Diana. Beautiful single white bloom that will attract butterflies in the garden. Only need one plant. And then over here we have one or two plants of what is known as the dwarf butterfly shrub. And as you can see, they do get big if you don't prune them, but they attract you know, the sulfur butterflies, the monarchs again, and then uh, even the uh, clear wing moths. And over here we have a planter that is filled with lantana. So you can use tender annuals in the garden at the same time. Keep in mind, you want to surround where you're really going to be sitting and spending time in a garden like this next garden I'll show you. After a long, hard day, maybe at work, you can just come and sit right in a patio surrounded with these plants which attract not only the butterflies, but even the hummingbirds. And this is a fantastic plant. It's a tender perennial. and In cold areas, you have to bring it indoors, and it's known as salvia black and blue. And one thing I really didn't mention is most of these plants are also frequented by the honeybee. And we all need to plant as many things that help our honeybees as much as possible. But just imagine after a long day, relaxing for the evening, right in your own backyard, surrounded with butterflies and hummingbirds. I'm Mark Viette. Join me next time in the garden. This week's Ag Calendar is for teachers pre-K through fifth grades. The Virginia Foundation for Agriculture in the Classroom has scheduled a series of free professional development workshops that will feature ag-related classroom activities that meet current educational standards. The workshops take place at the dates and locations on your screen. Participants will receive resource kits that include curriculum materials covering science, math, language arts, social studies, and health. More information is available at aginthclass.org. That does it for our show. Have a great week, everyone. I'm Amy Rocher for Virginia Farming.
This program is brought to you by the Virginia Farm Bureau. From apples to zucchini, Virginia farmers work hard to put food on your table. And Farm Bureau works year-round to help farmers and all Virginians. Farming, it's all good. To learn more, go to vafarmbureau.org. Polaris, offering its hardest working, smoothest riding, full-size workhorses, including the all-new 60-horsepower Ranger XP900, hunt, farm, or trail. Polaris has the full-size Ranger you want at Polaris.com. Brought to you by Farm Family, Life, Auto, Business, Farm. Steve Morse, fruit grower, distiller, entrepreneur. Another personal story on FarmFamilyPeople.com. Farm Family, the people you know.